Hey friends, this is Trish. We appreciate you stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will hit that subscribe button and come back often. And if you're a returning friend, thank you so much for your support. For today's video, we're going to be making some home decor projects that were inspired by pins that I saw on Pinterest. We hope that you will grab a cold drink, sit back, relax and enjoy, and maybe even be inspired to make some yourself. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, you're going to need a piece of cardboard. I got this flap off of an old box that I had. It's about eight inches wide and about 22 inches long. The size of your cardboard will determine the size of your basket. Some sisal rope that I had left over from some other projects that I did last year. I think I originally got this from Hobby Lobby. Some florals of choice. I'm using these from Walmart. Dollar Tree and Dollar General. What I like about this project is that you can change your flowers out for every season and it's really easy to do. Some ribbon of choice. I'm using this that I picked up from the thrift store and my glue gun and some glue sticks. The inspiration for this project came from this picture that I found on Pinterest. Now, I could see that it was originally a TikTok video, but there wasn't a link to the video, so I couldn't see exactly how they did it, but I thought it was pretty easy to kind of get the gist of what they did. Let's see how I did. My cardboard already had a crease in it from when I cut it off the box. I accidentally bent it, but that's okay. It's not exactly in the center. So I just took my finger trimmer and I cut off that end to make it the same on both sides and then trimmed it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. It will fix itself as you go along. Now I'm going to take my hot glue and I put a line down on my cardboard. Then I stick my rope down into it. When I get to the sides, you can see that I'm kind of adjusting this. I'm trying to figure out how wide I want this to be at the top. And the size of the loop that I leave on the side is going to determine how open it is at that very top. Now, of course, as we go down, it's going to get narrow and narrower, and that's exactly what I wanted. Then you're just going to start going around and around, gluing your rope. And I do put a little bit of glue on those sides as well this is going to keep it from gapping so bad and it took about an hour to do this whole thing I just put on a couple of my favorite youtubers and I listened to them as I was working and it went by pretty fast it's not too tedious I did start with my mini glue gun and I ended up switching to the bigger one because it just used less glue when I used the standard one now when you get to the bottom you are going to close that in you see how I just kind of looped it in and then I'm going to come back and on the top I'm going to fix that so you don't see the edge of the cardboard. All I'm doing is putting down another line of glue right on top of that and on top of that first piece of rope and then I just cover it up with my rope. We're going to go all the way around and then once you get to the end you're just going to kind of cut it at an angle and you'll be able to blend that in and you really won't even be able to see it and it's going to be finished. Now, I don't like all those hairs that that sisal rope has on it. So I grabbed my lighter and I burned off as much of it as I could. I did run out of fluid and I didn't want to have to run to town. So once I ran out, I just let it go. I used my scissors and trimmed it up a little more. To make a hanger for this, I'm gonna take my awl and I punch two holes on the back in the each side of it. And then I thread my twine onto a darning needle and I push it through one hole tie a triple knot, trim it up, and then put a little hot glue, and that's going to hold it even better. Then we'll figure out how long we want our hanger to be. I cut it off, and I do the same process. I just pull it through my hole, tie a triple knot, then I'm going to put a little hot glue right there at the opening of the hole, and pull it down to it, and trim it off. Now I'm going to take my ribbon, and I wrap it around my basket, and 
cut it off and then we're going to glue it down. I'm just using hot glue. This held really well. Just be careful not to burn yourself, especially if you're using burlap ribbon like I was. To make a bow, I take my ribbon and I make a loop and then I just kind of measure it against my basket to make sure it fits across. Then we're going to loop it one more time on each side and leave a tail going down. I scrunch it up in the center, then I take some twine and I'm going to wrap it around and around. I think I probably went around eight or 10 times and then we're going to tie it into a double knot at the back. I love how this looks. It's such a simple way to do a bow. We'll trim that off, then I'm going to fluff it out. I'll trim up that end a little bit, and then we're just going to dovetail it. That just means you fold it in half and cut it at an angle. Now I'm gonna lay it on there, and I decided to scrunch up that ribbon in the center so it wasn't so wide under my bow. I'm just gonna take a piece of twine, run it up under there, tie it into a triple knot, and trim it off. Now I can glue my bow on there, and it looks like that it was meant to be that way. We'll put some hot glue on the back and press our bow down in the center. Now we get to decorate. I'm just gonna take my floral foam, I cut it in half and stick it down in there. And for me, I like to cut my florals apart. This just gives me more control of where I put them. You do it however you would like. Once I get them cut apart, I just start sticking them down in there. I am not a florist. I do this until I like the way it looks. And again, what I really love about this project is at the end of summer, I can take these out, add some fall florals, and just keep going. I love this little basket. Once you get your flowers in, this project is complete. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload new videos each week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, and tips, tricks, and hacks. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. y'all it's Trish. For this project I'm going to use this little 5 by 7 frame that I picked up from Goodwill Outlet. It's not real wood but I like the coloring on it so I think it's going to work fine for this project even though I typically get wood frames. One of these grill toppers that I got in a pack of three from Walmart, some scrapbook paper, some Waverly ivory chalk paint, a wooden monogram initial. I got this one from the thrift store, but you can pick these up at any craft store. Some peel and stick moss. I got mine from Walmart. You can also get it from Hobby Lobby. It's just cheaper from Walmart. And my glue gun and some glue sticks. The inspiration for this project came from this one that I found on Pinterest. I love the mossy letter in the middle of the frame and y'all know that I love using old frames. So I had to give this one a shot. Now it has burlap in the background and I decided that I would rather have the barn wood chicken wire look. So we're going to use some scrapbook paper and a grill grate. The first thing I'm gonna do is paint my frame. I removed the backing and I took the glass out and threw it away because we're not going to need it. Then I'm going to start painting. Now this frame is not wood and typically I do get wooden frames. I'm not sure why I ended up picking this one up but it did take about three coats of this paint before it stopped looking streaky. I would put a coat on, let it dry, then do another coat. Now, I could have roughed this up and it would have stuck better and I wouldn't have had to use as much paint, but I like the coloring on this and I was afraid if I sanded it, it was gonna mess that up and I want it to show through when I distress it. 
While our frame is drying, I'm going to take the backing from this. I lay it on the back of my scrapbook paper and trace around it. Then we're just going to cut that out. And then we're going to do the same thing for this grate. I did use a permanent marker that made it stand out. And I just traced around my backing. And this cuts really easily. Now, these are the Tim Holtz um, scissors. So they're a little more heavy duty. But it just popped right through those little pieces. For this letter, I'm just going to lay it on the back of my moss and I trace around it with my permanent marker and then we're just going to cut it out. I love this peel and stick moss and there's a lot of it in there. They have it folded like four times so you get a lot of this and it has lasted me for a long time. You don't have the mess with this that you have with regular moss and you don't have to use hot glue so you don't burn your fingers. Once we got this cut out, I just peel off the back and then you're just going to place it on there and stick it down, pressing it around those edges. Now, it didn't completely cover the edges and that's okay. I just used the pieces that were left over when I cut it out. I trim them down and stick it on and when you push it down, it blends together and you really can't even tell where your seams are. We're going to go all the way around this and get it completely covered. Now that our paint is dry, I'm going to use a wet wipe and do a wet distressing on this. Now because this frame was slick, this comes off really easily. So I just take my wet wipe and I go around the edges and I take off as much as I want to give it the distressed look that I like. You can do this however you choose. Now we'll put it all together. I put my wire in, then I put my scrapbook paper and put the back back on and lock it into place. Then we're just going to flip it over, take our monogram and we'll use hot glue to stick that down to the front of this. And with that, this project is complete. Easy peasy and really pretty. We want to invite you to come with us on a crafty cruise getaway with four other YouTube channels. You can enjoy beaches and sand and all of the onboard ship amenities and spend time with six different YouTube crafters in classes curated just for you. It is going to be a blast, but space is very limited and it is going quickly. Make sure you go to the website www.craftycruisegetaway.com for all of the information. There will also be a link in the description box below. Can't wait to meet you there. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this little terracotta pot that I got from Walmart for 88 cent. You can also get these two in a pack from the Dollar Tree some faux fur that I had left over from another project. You could also use the dust mop from the Dollar Tree, some twine, a wooden bead or a half bead, and I'm using a faux succulent and some floral foam, but you could also put a live plant in these as well. The inspiration for this project originally came from these pins that I saw on Pinterest where they had the painted gnome on the side of the pot. I thought these were so cute and I wanted to do a 3D version of this. I made a couple of these on a live that we did a couple of weeks ago and I wanted to include it in today's video for Pinterest inspirations just in case you didn't get to see it then. Since I am going to be using a faux plant in this, I went ahead and cut down my floral foam so that it would fit in my pot and I stuck it down in there. And then we're going to start adding our twine. I put down a good bit of hot glue right under the lip of this pot and I start sticking my twine down in it and then I just keep going around working my way up. We're going to cover this lip and it's going to be my gnome's hat. 
I think these are so stinking cute. They sell well at craft shows. They're great to have for small things that people can pick up, especially if you go ahead and put a plant in it. And you can make these with any size planner. You can make a whole family of these just by using different size pots. And I think that they would be stinking adorable. Now we're going to make his beard by using some of this faux fur that I had left over from another project. I'm just gonna cut it in kind of a V shape. Then I put some hot glue right at the top and I push it right under the edge of that twine. I want it to get just as close to it as I can. Now mine was a little bit too long, so I trimmed it off so that it was the same as my pot. And then I'm gonna use some more hot glue to secure it in place. Now I'm gonna take my fingers and kind of push aside some of the fur to make like a little mustache. And then we'll use our half bead and some hot glue and glue it right there in the center for his nose. Now we'll add our succulent to this. And with that, this project is complete. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of the wood kits that I sell in our Etsy shop. There is always a link to the Etsy shop down below if you're interested. I sell a lot of these 10 inch kits where you get the wood round, the wording, any flowers, and a stand um, to display it with. If you would like one of the larger 14 inch sign kits, I sell the wording and any of the accessories, but you would need to get the wood round from from Hobby Lobby because it's cheaper for you to purchase it there than it is for me to mail it to you. Some paint in brown, yellow, and white, and some wood glue. As I said, we have an Etsy shop and one of our customers sent me this picture from Pinterest and asked me if I could make something similar to this for her. I'm very familiar with Joyful Unicorn Designs. I've purchased several of her laser um, files and I knew that I could get this one from her. So I went over, purchased it and cut out the pieces and I thought that I would show you how easy these are to put together. The base of our sign has this chocolate brown color, so I'm going to use some Waverly chalk paint in truffle. I only had a little bit left in the jar, and when it gets like that, I like to put a little bit of water in there and shake it up. Then you can use a damp paper towel or a baby wipe to spread it on your wood and it acts like a stain, but you don't get those awful fumes and it dries really fast. I love doing this with my leftover paint. I'm going to make sure that I do the top of this really well and I'll also do the sides of our sign and then we're gonna set it aside to dry. While that is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and work on the other pieces. I'm painting my daisies with my white chalk paint. I had pulled the acrylic paint, but I get a better coverage with the chalk paint. I don't have to use so many coats. But now if you are using chalk paint, just make sure that you seal your sign. I like to use a clear acrylic sealing spray. You're just gonna spray it over there and let that set before you hang it where it could get wet or moist. Chalk paint has a tendency to run if you don't seal it after it dries. We're gonna paint the centers of our flowers with our bright yellow acrylic paint. And I'm also going to paint my wording with my bright yellow acrylic paint. And we'll set these aside to completely dry. Once our pieces are dry, we can put it together. I lay it out so that I know how I want everything to be. And then we're just going to use some wood glue to attach it. I love the super glue wood glue that you get from 
Dollar Tree. It's cheap, but it works really well. It sticks well and it dries fast. Now I do take some and always put it into this little bottle with this needle nose on it. It makes it easy to get on the smaller pieces. But once I get to my bigger pieces, I just use the regular bottle that it comes with. I just make sure that I kind of keep it minimal so that I don't squeeze it out the sides once I press it down. But if some does happen to squeeze out, don't worry about it too much because you can just take a clean paintbrush and just wipe it away and then once it dries you're not even going to be able to tell it once i got my daisies glued down i'm going to come back in and glue in all the centers and once i do that this project is complete now for mine i didn't need to add a hanger because this has a little lip edge on it but if yours doesn't have that edge on it then you would need to add a hanger to the back you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all.